we can't forget where we come from. So if you don't mind, let's have a little church right now. Something about that name. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, it is the sweetest, sweetest name, sweetest, sweetest name I, I know. know. Yeah, I love. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, I love the yes, name. Sir. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Come on and lift your hands and say it. It is the sweetest, it is the sweetest name. name. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I know. Listen to this right here. Some people say I'm crazy, but I can't explain no, no. the power that I feel. Oh, when I call your name, when I call your name, said it's just mine for you. Oh, shut up in my bones. As the day 
sing the wondrous love of
one of the most difficult things to do is find yourself in a storm. And while in that storm, it seems like everyone who you thought you could count on has, has walked away. And sometimes it seems like even God himself has forgotten about you. But in spite of that, to still be able to lift your hands and say, Lord, I trust you. Trust you, Lord, how I love you so much. Though my nights may seem long and I feel so alone, Lord, my trust is in you. I, can't do this by myself. I surrender to you. Yeah. So many painful thoughts travel through my mind, and I wonder how I will make it through. It's not easy. Lord, it's not easy. Sometimes the pain in my life makes you seem so far away. Seem far away. But I'll trust. Yeah. I need to know your name. As long as I know you're here, Father, I know I can make it. Through the tears and the pain. Thank you, Jesus. Through the heartache and rain. trust you. Sometimes it's so hard because everything that I see tells me not to believe. Everything that I see tells me not to believe. But I'll trust you, Lord. You have never found me. My past still controls me. Things that happened to me 10 years ago. Hurt ever leave. Yeah. I can only Trust you, no one else like you. Do. But it's the thoughts in my mind. So Sometimes the pain in my life, oh God, it makes you seem so far away. Can I get a witness, somebody? But God, I trust you. Through the tears, through the tears and the pain, through Anybody ever had to cry late in the midnight hour? Every tear you've had to cry, through the heartache and rain. Come on, take it out through the tears. Oh, that's right, through the heartache. Listen, somebody's going through something right now, and the devil's trying to convince you that there's no way you can make it out, and he says you're not going to be able to get out of this situation, but I wish somebody would make the devil out of a lie right now and lift your hands and say, God, I will trust you. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know when you're going to show up, but God, I know you're going to do it. God, I know you're going to bring me out. Come on, if that's you, come on, lift your voice and say, I will. Oh, that's right. I'll trust you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I don't know when the pains go in, but I know God, you wouldn't put more on me than I can bear. So I trust you in spite of what I see, in spite of what I'm going through. I trust you. God, you never left me. I know you love me. That's why I trust you. Come on, why you take it up? I've had my heart broken. I made some mistakes. God, you still kept me. Oh, God, you're faithful. You see what I'm going through. You know Trust! 
first of all, uh, on behalf of the family, let me say thank you for all of your expressions of kindness at the loss of their brother, Ronald Lewis Jordan. Our prayers are with the family and for the family. Our scripture reading for today uh, will be taken from 1 John, the fourth chapter, and it reads, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Our Old Testament scripture for today will be taken from the 23rd number of the Psalms and it reads as follows. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Won't you join me in prayer? God, as we come before you today we come mourning and celebrating the extraordinary life of Ronald Lewis Jordan we thank you for what he has meant and continues to mean to his family God we pray right now that you would continue to give strength and guidance during these times God if there's ever a time that we need you it's times like this so God give them strength and give them courage but most of all, God, give them hope. In the name of the Christ we do pray. Amen and amen. Now we will have uh, special, we will have a selection. on raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day still that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore I know he'll leave be safely through that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storm don't cease, and if the wind keeps on blowing in my life, my The storm keeps on raging in my life And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day 
Fill that whole the life within It's reassured As I keep my eyes upon the disc Then sure I know you'll lead me safely through That blessed place he has prepared But if that storm don't cease And if the wind keeps on blowing in my life My soul That sometimes in this life we're going to be tossed By the waves and the currents that seem so fear But in the Word of God I have an anchor That keeps me steadfast, unmovable In spite of times But that storm don't cease And just in case the winds keep on blowing in my life My soul My soul been anchored My soul's been anchored My soul's been anchored My soul's been anchored My soul's been anchored the bills may roll, the breakers may dash I shall not sway because he hold me fast So dark today, the clouds in the sky I know I'll be alright because Jesus is nigh Amazing grace, how sweet the sound I once was lost but now I'm found Precious Lord, take my hand Lead me on and let me stand My soul's been anchored My soul's been anchored My soul's been anchored My soul's been anchored My soul has been Anchored in the Lord To the family of Ronald Lewis Jordan in sympathy. In our thoughts and cherished memories, our loved ones are always with us. May your precious moments and memories and the sympathy of friends help us to comfort you at this time from the family of Penny Rice. The family acknowledged and is thankful for the many expressions of love, kindness, encouragement, and support shown during this time. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The family would like to do a special acknowledgement to Betty Jordan and to Mr. Glenn Briscoe. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, uh, if you will join me in just for a few moments, uh, join me in reading the obituary.
Amen. Let me also say thank you, uh, Leo Lang, for uh, the selection you shared, and for Penny Rice for sharing the condolences. And now we will have Alice Writing to come with another selection. this time once I surrender I won't dare look back cause if I do I'll get off track move ahead in faith and patiently await your answer what will it be I see you know what's best for me prepare my mind prepare my heart for whatever comes i'm gonna be ready any test i feel like i'm so blessed you in control i can't go wrong i always know i'm gone yeah ready mm -hmm. i was free to do what i wanted to lost everything but I still had you You show me your grace Now my life's renewed And I thank you Yes, I thank you So I'll tell anyone who listens I'll testify About how good you are to me When so-called friends pass me by the fact that you would show somebody so broke down so much mercy beyond what I see. You know what's best, best for me. Prepare my mind and prepare my heart. Whatever comes. Be ready. Give me the strength. I gotta pass this test. I know that I am, know that I am, know that I'm blessed. You're in control of my life. I can't go wrong, no. Cause I know I'll be ready. So use me as you will. I'll pay the price Cause you made the ultimate sacrifice It's all because of you That I even have a life And I give my love as a tribute To how great you are Sight beyond what I You know what's best, best for me. Prepare my mind, yeah, 
and prepare my heart for whatever comes I'm gonna be ready give me the strength I gotta pass this test I know that I am know that I am know that I'm blessed he's in control of my life I can't go wrong no cause I know I'll be ready oh ready Because you live deep inside of me. Because I know that it's in your will for me to be ready. ready. I'm going to be whoa, whoa, ready. Thank all of those who have participated in, in this service um, uh, in such an appropriate way to this family, uh, children, wife, brothers and sisters, siblings and friends and loved ones and cousins and all of those that are here. Uh, we thank you for your attendance and not only that, we pray God's blessings upon you. That's why. Today really is an extraordinary moment for children and for wives and for family uh, as they wrestle with almost a new beginning. Uh, brothers and sisters as they mourn the history and celebrate the history. It's good to know that we serve a God who never forgets, that he uses moments like this for us to reflect not only to reflect but to remember uh, that one day it will be ours to call the same uh, the same call uh, that Ronald has had to answer and that's why the text that we're going to share today is really about it is about living life fully uh, to the glory of God it really is about valuing and cherishing every moment you have we get so caught up on peripheral things that are they are important i'm not saying they're not important but we can lose sight of the richest and most valuable gifts that we have if we're not careful that's why uh, 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 apostle paul uh, as he is about to transition he is sharing uh, uh, with his mentee, Timothy, uh, whose mother and grandmother raised him in the faith to follow the way, uh, not the institution, but to follow after the way, to be a part of the local fellowship, but never lose sight of every breath you take. And this is what he said said I'm about to be poured out a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand I have fought a good fight I finished the race I've kept the faith from now on there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give to me but not only to me but to all those who love his appearance Here, the Apostle Paul uh, shares as he is this profoundly dedicated Hebrew. He is this profoundly dedicated follower of Christ uh, who starts out really hating the gospel. He started out hating the followers of Jesus and even Jesus. Matter of fact, he was called and considered by many uh, as uh, the king of the Jews because he knew how to persecute the people that he hated. Matter of fact, the Bible says this about him, that 
when the first deacon was stoned, get this, when the first deacon is stoned, Paul, uh, who is Saul at that time, holds the cloaks of those who would stone the first deacon. But somewhere down the line, uh, the Spirit of God speaks to him and knocks him from his beasts as he is traveling. And for three years he goes underground because God challenges him. Paul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he goes underground. He learns of the way and comes out as one of the most profound voices that ever was, which ought to be a lesson to all of us. Stop running folk down just because they don't see life through your lens. You never know how God is going to show up. You never know how God is going to speak. You never know how God is going to move in their lives. Be careful of devaluing people because they, they don't see life through your lens. But now after years of being committed, not only being committed now, the very thing that he hates now he loves. And not only does he love it, get this, he is incarcerated because he falls in love with the work of Jesus to draw men to the God of the Hebrews, the Jews. He draws them. They put him in prison and now years go by and he is in dungeons where he begins to lose his eyesight because he's writing and reading in darkness by candlelight and sometimes even by moonlight. The dungeons are so dark and damp that now crippling arthritis takes over his joints. Matter of fact, the word of God says that he even prayed three times that God would take whatever this is from him. And the only thing God told him was this, y'all, my grace is enough for you you get that sometimes suffering is a part of the journey it is a part of the challenge of what it is it is not the arrogance of institutionalism it is the suffering that God would be glorified in the lives of people uh, not only does he do that now he is about to pass he is laying on his deathbed and he says, I'm about to be poured out a drink offering. What does he mean? A drink offering uh, was uh, a tradition of reflection. It is the looking back to make sure and to revisit, have I given my all to God? Have I done the best that I can to live a life that honors God? He said, I'm about to be poured out a drink offering. And the time of my departure is at hand. And this is what he said. He said, I, Fought a good fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. First thing he says, I fought a good fight. What could that possibly mean? What could that possibly mean? Why would he share this? And why is it important in this moment as we celebrate and mourn uh, Ronald's life? Because life is about learning how to fight the right fights. We can always have fights that we think are important, but are they always the right fights? Are they the fights that bring our children to know what it means to have a father that loves them? Are they the fights that bring our spouses to the point that, you no, know, maybe they weren't perfect, but they were perfect for me? To this mother, children born of these wonderful relationships that Ronald had. My prayer for you is that you're able to look through the lens of history and not see just that your father was an amazing man because he was all of that, but how he struggled to make life better for you. Because life is about a struggle. 
You know, we're so used to people always talking about how amazing their life is. And we look at Facebook and we let folk come on and talk about how wonderful life is. But one of the things that they don't talk about is the struggle that life was for them. Relationships that were broken and relationships that had to be healed and mended. We don't look at that as amazing, but brothers and sisters, none of us have relationships that at times don't need to be mended and healthy men and women learn how to mend broken relationships. <laughs> it ain't always about how things are and how they go well, but how do you deal with it when things go bad? Is that good? That's what real men and women do. Life isn't fair for any of us. How many of you know that? Life's not fair for any of us. So it's never about just the moments we think are wonderful and good. <laughs> but it's about how you learn to trust God when everything seems or feels like it's falling apart. Uh, uh, you know, we get used to fighting about simple stuff. Clothes somebody wears. How they wear their hair, where they go to church, where they don't go to church. We fight all those secondary issues. But one of the one 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 thing that the text that that we shared today from from the text uh, earlier that we read was the real fight is how you gonna figure out how to love folk that are broken just like you. Folk who are struggling with issues just like you. You know, when I think about a husband and a wife, well, you can't be married to somebody and they go well all the time. Sometimes that thing gets pretty rough. Doesn't mean you don't love them. It just means that you got these two extraordinary personalities that have decided to live life together. And they trust and they learn how to live in the same space together, prayerfully to God's glory. That's learning to fight the right fights. Learning to be okay when folk don't agree with you. It's okay if you don't agree with me. But know that God, if you ever need me, I'm right there. If you ever need a helping hand, I'm right there. Learn how to fight the right fights. He said this, I fought a good fight. Then he said this, I finished the race. What could he mean when he says I finished the race? One of the things I think that he could possibly mean in this text is this, learn how to stay in your own lane. Learn how, let me say it one more time, learn how to stay in your own lane. In other words, you got enough business by yourself than to try to run everybody else's business. I found this out, y'all, about life. And, and I think that this is one of the things that made uh, Ronald extraordinary. I, I really do. Ronald was there to help any way that he could because he was good with his hands. He needed car worked on. He could do it. He's kind of a jack of all trades. He could just kind of do whatever. He, he, he was the guy that when everybody else messed something up, he could come in and straighten it up. Because he just had this extraordinary skill set. And if he loved you, he'd go out of his way for you. Because he loved to work with his hands. Because staying in your lane is knowing what you can do but it's also knowing it's okay to not have all of the skills that I can do this and I can do this but maybe I ought to need leave something else to somebody else you know what the problem is with most folk they too busy trying to figure out what somebody else ought to be doing versus majoring on what they ought to be doing I'm telling y'all not what I think I'm telling you what I know as a pastor I got folk who who never went to school, 
doesn't deal with they don't deal with the church every day they go to church but they don't deal with the church every day and they think that they have all of the information it takes to run a church they don't know how you got to pay them bills every week they don't know how when there's a murder over here you got to be there and you got to try to balance all of this stuff be careful about getting in other folks lanes in your life learn how to manage your space he says I fought, fought a good fight I finished the race I kept the faith what could that mean I kept the faith I kept the faith I kept the faith I kept the faith what does that mean in other words when everything started breaking down around me I trusted God when it felt like I wasn't going to make it. I trust God. You know, I'm good with, and, and I mean this, y'all. And, and I pray that each of you get to this place in your life. And I mentioned it earlier. Learning how to be okay if folk don't believe like you believe. A part of that is this. That because life is so hard for all of us, learn how to give people the grace to figure life out on their own terms get have enough grace not to be so indicting to people but to know that god you're bigger than all of what i see and understand give me enough within me to give people enough room to learn and to grow and to figure out to fail to get up and to Figure it out again. Because that's what life is all about. Uh, uh, so, Morano was, you know, he drove the buses for ATA. Mentioned in here about his relationships and these extraordinary children that were born of these relationships. Then we're sitting in here and all the great music that's been sung and all of this stuff that's going on. I think the greatest thing about his life from my perspective, from the outside looking in, was this. He was a man who either learned or was learning how to have grace through the journey. Grace through the journey. You know, it's easy to be mad at folk. It's always easy to be mad at folk. It's another thing to be able to forgive and move on and to move forward. And moving on doesn't always mean you gotta stay there. Sometimes moving on does mean space. But it also means that I care enough for you to be okay as you move through life to fulfill what you believe your journey ought to be. Because that's what life is. My prayer for you, for everyone in here, is that we have enough grace for each other. That we really do make room for people to learn and grow and to become. Because none of us are ever a finished product. We're all in the process of becoming. Till the day we die, we're always becoming. We're never everything we ought to be. But we're always and ought to be seeking to become the best that God would have us to be. Uh, in a broken culture, how do we learn how to move forward? I'm gonna close by this. I believe it's by one way, and that's through the work of God through Jesus. I really believe it with everything that I am. Work of God through the shed blood of the Christ. And he dies on the cross. The father touches him and raises him from the dead. And in our profession and confession of, of him. That he is able to empower us. To strengthen us and give us hope and give us meaning and give us courage. And be okay if life ain't fair. But no. He's an ever present help in a time of trouble. 
that he is joy and sorrow, he is hope in a community, in a world that has become hopeless. Don't you fool yourself. This world and this community has grown hopeless. But in God, he can give new meaning, new purpose, and new drive. My prayer for these children, my prayer for this family is that forget about religiousness and embrace Jesus. And then by embracing Jesus, yes, find a local fellowship to be a part of. But don't ever think that just joining the church is going to be the end all be all. Have a hunger to learn God through the work of Jesus, through others that love God as well. Let's pray. God, I thank you for this extraordinary family and for Ronald's life. Thank you for the gift that he is and continues to be to this family. Bless his wife, bless his children, bless his siblings. But most of all, God, use this moment to help us to reflect that one day we will come into your presence as well. Through the power of your spirit, speak to the hearts of these, your people. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. Amen. And now I'll turn you into the hands of serenity. Uh, and before they have final uh, remarks, uh, we will do, since there is no uh, 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 graveside, we will do final remarks uh, and the closing now. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God and his wise providence to take from this world the soul of our dear deceased brother, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking forward to the general resurrection when the earth and the sea shall give up her dead and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Won't you join me in prayer? Again, Father, we thank you for Ronald's life. We thank you for this family, but most of all, God, we pray that you would challenge them to learn to trust you in all of life's circumstances. Be with them as life is changing, but let them know that all things change but you. Ground them, saturate them, in the power of your love. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Now I will turn it into the hands of the funeral.